Hello, welcome to episode three of the Ginger Hook Knitting Podcast. My name's Laura and you can find me at Ginger Hook on Instagram and on Ravelry. It's been a while since I recorded my last episode. Um, I think the last episode came out like December 23rd or something like that. Um, so yeah, it, it's 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 been a while. Um, I did try to sit down and record last month, but I got like halfway through and I just wasn't feeling it. Um, in general, like I'm in a very chaotic mindset right now. So this video may be a little bit chaotic. I apologize for that. That's just what's going on at the moment. I have a lot to show you, uh, a lot of finished objects, a lot of acquisitions, potential yarn ban we'll talk about that later because things have been getting out of hand so let's just jump right into it first of all because the first finished object is what i'm actually wearing right now so this is a self-drafted sweater um i used shiny happy cotton from wool and the gang in the color cinnamon dust um i kind of influenced myself into buying this yarn because i was talking about it in my first episode of the podcast um, because I made my sweater number 11 in shiny happy cotton and I just really loved like working with the yarn and I especially like how it feels on it's very very soft and it's not like any other cotton that I've worked with it's just very smooth and not dry at all and so I really wanted to work with it again and thankfully Wool and the Gang were having a sale uh, when I bought it and um, so yeah this is the sweater. Um, I couldn't find like a pattern that I wanted to use just because um, I kind of know how this yarn behaves now that I've used it once already. And a lot of the patterns that I like are not written with like a pretty like heavy, like large gauge cotton in mind. And so I thought I would just try doing something myself because there was a very specific fit I had in mind. Basically what I wanted to do was um, replicate the fit of the first sweater I ever made um, which was just a little like cropped sweater basically it had like sleeves that were also this length um, it was also knitted in shiny happy cotton in the color black I don't actually know if that's the actual color name but it, it was the black color basically and it was just like from like a random pattern that I found on Ravelry and it actually had like waist shaping, um, which I also did. Um, I knitted it on a six millimeter needle. So it's pretty, it's a pretty loose gauge. Um, for reference, this like yarn calls for a five millimeter. I think it's like a true Aran weight yarn. Um, and that's what I used for this sweater as well. I used a five millimeter and then four millimeter for the ribbing. Um, basically, yeah, I just wanted to replicate the fit of that sweater. Um, so I knew I wanted to do waist shaping and I knew I wanted to have kind of like short, like short ish sleeves. I don't know what you would call this length if it's like three quarter length or something. I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's what I kind of had in mind. I did have like a certain vision in my head. I actually wanted to do like a rolled neck kind of, but that didn't really work out. So I just did ribbing as you can see. Um, yeah, so it's just a pretty simple raglan with two raglan stitches and I increased for the raglan every other round. Um, because of that, it it says it doesn't really like fit as well as it could like obviously the raglan stitches are pretty far out but because of that i was able to do some really um nice neck shaping um so what i did is when i first cast on the stitches i think i cast on like 38 for the back and then eight per sleeve and then i cast on two stitches on each side here um, of the front and then I basically increased every other round until it got to a depth that I liked and then I just cast on um, like some stitches here in the middle to match the stitch count on the back and yeah I really like how the neck shaping turned out because um, if you've seen my previous episodes you'll know that I'm pretty um, picky 
about my neck shaping. So I knew I really wanted to focus on that with this sweater. And I think it turned out really nice. So yeah, of course, as I said, the, the raglan increases could have like a better placement. And yeah, I could have like, you know, paid more attention to that. But I think all in all, I really um, like how it fits and I like how it looks and it's really comfortable. And um, I'll get up in a second to show you what it looks like. Um, the bottom, because there's like a rolled, I just did like a little rolled edge here. Anyway, so yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this, with this sweater and I've worn it a bunch of times already. It's really nice to just like throw on over a top or something. Um, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of this um, when it gets a little bit warmer because I know like the first sweater I made, it got a lot of wear also like in the spring cause I could just like throw it over, over like, you know, a, a t-shirt and just with like a pair of jeans and just go. So yeah, I'm very happy with this. Um, you already know, I love this yarn. Uh, it's extremely comfortable to, on the skin. It's very, very soft and um, yeah. So I'm just gonna show you what it looks like real quick. So I'm sorry, <laughs> I did not want to move my camera because it's like on this really like wobbly thing that I screwed to my plant shelf. It's it's not an ideal setup. Basically, I didn't want to move it because then it will take ages to get back to where I had it before. So you're just going to have to live with this angle. It's a very weird angle, but just like to show you what the sweater looks like. Also, I'm wearing sweatpants, so... <laughs> Yeah, um, this is what the sweater looks like. You can see it has like some shaping here on the side. Basically what I did is I just did like some uh, decreases here. So after it got like to the widest part of my bust, I did some decreases. And then once it was starting to get to like where my hips kind of go out here, I did I think only two increases and I knew this was gonna be cropped anyway. So then I, uh, just bound off. I did a couple of rows. Um, so this is knit in a five millimeter needle. And then for the bottom, I knit, I think like maybe like seven, five to seven rows in a four millimeter needle. Um, and then I bound off and that kind of helps it like not roll up too much and not like flare out too much. So I really like the fit of this. Hold on, let me just, okay, that's better. <laughs> so yeah, I really like this. The sleeves, as I said, are like, I, this is almost like seven eighths length, don't you think? Like, I don't know what you would call this. This is not, this, I think it's too short to be bracelet length, but yeah, so it's just, it's really comfortable. It's just, yeah, I, I didn't want to make the depth of the yoke too low because I know that like with cotton, it will expand and grow um, with wear. So I kind of made it on like the smaller size. And now that I've worn it a couple of times, it has grown a little bit and gotten more relaxed. So yeah, this is, this is it. This is my self-drafted sweater. Okay, next finished object. This was a work in progress um, the last time. I showed this to you. Um, this is my little neck warmer thing that I made um, based on a Kim Hargreaves pattern. The pattern is called Form. It's for a sweater actually, and it's from her pattern collection also called Form. Um, and I modified this because I really like the cables and I wanted to do something with cables and I wanted to do a neck warmer. So I just modified it to be a neck warmer. I don't think I've added any pattern notes to my Ravelry yet. I did write them down. So I will eventually add them to my uh, Ravelry project page for this. Um, but this is knit in Rauwerk. DK, which is a worsted weight yarn, actually. I don't know why it's called DK, but it is like a true worsted, I feel. I've worked with it two times so far. So this is what it looks like. As I said, I knitted this in the Rauwerk uh, DK, which is a different gauge than what the pattern calls for. The pattern actually calls for like a true DK 
gauge and um obviously this is different but i didn't really like i don't really care about that because i was just making a neck warmer so the gauge doesn't really matter too much um so i used 4.5 millimeter needles for this um basically it's the you have the pattern the the cables on the front with some shaping up here and then you have exactly the same cables on the back um with some nice little ribbing that goes into the cables so i really really like this um and then you have a really um quite large like cowl neck thing here i didn't intend for it to be uh, this wide and I think this is where like the difference in gauge came into play because the pattern says that usually with with uh like cables what if you cast off on top of cables you would decrease so that they don't like flare out too much and the pattern says without giving away too much I'm gonna say this one thing and I don't think it really matters um the pattern said specifically to not do any decreases on the top of the back panel. So it was like, well, okay, I guess I won't do that. Um, I should have done that though, because the neck <laughs> is quite wide. Um, there were a lot of stitches and it took me ages to complete this. Um, you can see I reversed the pattern because it's uh, three by two ribs. So I had to reverse it here so that it would be the same on the outside um so yeah I had to add an elastic in here and I'm gonna add another elastic you can see that I basically just wove it through the stitches um I'm gonna add another elastic like underneath here on the outside um just because I mean it is very comfortable to wear and it's definitely not too tight on my neck but I feel like if it's actually like really cold and windy I just want it to be a little bit tighter here on my neck so that you know, my neck is a little bit more warm. So let me just put it on for you so that you can see what it looks like. Okay, so this is what it looks like on. As you can see, like usually if I was just making a sweater, um, also just to wear inside and stuff, I this wouldn't be a problem for me at all. Uh, but because of the fact that I basically only wear this when I'm going for like a dog walk, and when it's like really cold and windy, I just like would like some more coverage here. So it could be like this, like this would be perfect. So I think adding another elastic in here would definitely solve this problem, but it fits super nicely. And I've been wearing this like in the house as well, um, in my apartment when it's gotten a little bit cold, especially if I'm wearing like a dress that has like a little bit more, um, where my like upper back is a little bit more exposed. This has been absolutely perfect. I've just thrown it over and it's been nice and warm and yeah. So uh, I think I mentioned last time that uh, for the edging, I just did like a little garter edge here, which I really like. And I'm extremely happy with the outcome of this. I think the yarn worked super well for this as well, since for, um, especially for cables, I mean, because the yarn blooms really really nicely and it just makes cables look really nice so i will definitely be using this yarn again for for cable work um yeah so this is that i've worn it several times since finishing it and i've really really like enjoyed wearing it so far so i'm very happy with the outcome of this okay moving on my next finished object um yeah, um, it's a Sophie's scarf. I know I keep mixing up the shawl and the scarf. Last episode, I called my shawl a scarf, even though it's a shawl. This is the scarf, so it's the short version. I know like you're probably sick and tired of seeing this by now, but I had to make one because I had this like vision in my head and I was like, you know, just having like a little scarf um, that you can tie like once or twice and you, when you just like need a little bit of coverage, but you don't want to wear like a huge scarf. And so I had a very specific vision in my head and um, I'm very happy with this. So it's a little bit, there's like a little bit of a bend in it because it was like on top of my wardrobe thing. Sorry. Anyway, so this is knit in Durerum Natura. Uh, Gilead. I'm gonna pronounce the names like 
half English now because I feel stupid pronouncing them in French. I don't know what it is about like French pronouncing things in different languages in general except German because I, I speak German but it, if I feel stupid doing it. <laughs> I don't know. I know it's, it's stupid to say that but um I just I'm just gonna pronounce the the names how I would in English so I hope that's okay anyway Juliet yeah this is it I wanted to actually knit this in Ulysse but I think I ordered the wrong thing so I don't know if it was my mistake or the yarn store's mistake but I what arrived was Juliet and so I was like well whatever I'll just knit it in this then and I knit this it's a worsted weight yarn so it would have been like the right weight for a Sophie shawl um and then the Sophie scarf calls for a DK weight yarn um but like I don't care I just uh, used a four millimeter needle. Uh, the pattern actually calls for a 3.5 but since I didn't want this to be like too tight and I still wanted it to be a little bit drapey I just used a four millimeter needle. So this is that. It was very fast but I'll, honestly I'm like done with like Sophie in general right now. I like it's fine to knit it and it is quite fun and addictive because you're always wanting to work to like to the next increase or decrease there's like something on my face sorry I'm like there's something itchy there um okay stop anyway this it's fun to knit but when I'm done with it like I'm glad to be done with it I'm like okay thank god that's over you know um so I don't think I'll be making one of these again this season at least we'll see what happens next fall but so I usually wear it like this and then I have it around here. Um, I have to say, I don't have the pattern for the Sophie scarf. I only have the pattern for the shawl. And so I just did what I thought was the case for the Sophie scarf. And basically that's just like adding more rows between the increases or decreases. And I'm pretty sure that this was like what I did was correct. Uh, obviously my gauge is a little bit different. So I think my scarf is a little bit wider. I don't know. Um, so this is how I wear it most of the time I think it's I just I really love it and then sometimes you know if I'm not like super warm but I still want to have like something around my neck I'll just do the one of these you know one of these I just I really love it I really love it and um I've worn it a couple of times already as well so um very happy with this I forgot to mention the color of the yarn is Erable French again um I will write it down either on screen or in the description below so that you know what I'm saying <laughs> but this is that so very happy with the Sophie scarf um yeah so that was it for finished objects um I did not finish my second mitten I haven't even cast it on yet um but it hasn't been like super cold and I mean it has been cold but not as cold as it was when I cast the mitten on and my hands haven't been as cold when I've been outside so I kind of just like lost the motivation to continue knitting that I will eventually finish it because I looked at the mitten I have already finished and was like this is so nice and I don't know I just need to like actually sit down and do it because it's a really fast it's really fast to knit up but I just haven't had like the motivation to do it there's just been too much other stuff that I've wanted to do so uh let's get into the works in progress the first work in progress I have is the one that I'm most close to finishing uh so I only have about like five rows to go on this I don't know why I just didn't finish it before this episode but I just didn't feel like sitting down and finishing it now so this is a um basic double ribbed beanie um, I've made one like this before if you go back to my previous episode um I made one using the Rauwerk um DK yarn uh and this one it's exactly the same pattern by Cleomi Smith um I love this pattern a lot I have another one on the go as well um 
but this is using some a very interesting mix of yarns. So I when I first made my first um Rauwerk order, I checked out like the, the other yarns that they had on their website and I found this yarn by Kama Rose, uh, which is called Midnight Sol or something like that. Um, basically it's an alpaca lace weight alpaca I don't know what exactly the composition is but um it's basically something that you can use as like an alternative to mohair and I'm not a huge fan of like the the the, the fuzzy look um so I just bought one skein just to try it out because I wanted to see what it looked like and I wanted to see what it felt like and I've never like knit something with um a wool and like a lace weight whatever um so I just wanted to try it out to see what all the hype was about so I got this skein and I didn't know what I was gonna do with it so it was lying around for a bit and um then I really wanted to use it so I thought well this is definitely gonna be enough for a hat so I'll just make a hat and um, I'm doubling it with um, Ulysse in the color Cell, Cell, which I believe is salt in French. Um, it's the, they're off white color. So it's a really, really nice color. It's like a kind of yellowy almost, um, but I think it looks really good with my skin. Like I, I said before, I'm not like a huge cream person, but I think these more like yellowy creams suit my skin tone better than like the more cool toned creams. Anyway, um, this is the hat. So it's knitting up really nicely. And I the stripes, I decided to use up some of the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino that I had in the color Brown Bear that I used for my Sophie shawl. So I had some left and I really just wanted to use it up because I was like, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna use this for and why not just add some stripes here. And I really like the two by two rib with stripes look and so that's what I decided to do. So this is what it looks like so far as I said I'm almost done with the crown decreases and this is the worsted weight version. Um, I think I mentioned before that this pattern comes with instructions for four different yarn weights and this is the worsted weight version in the largest size. I cast on the largest size by accident, even though I meant to cast on the medium, um, but that's fine. I tried it on, it fits fine. It's, I just hope it doesn't like grow too much when I block it, but it fits like fine so far. Um, and yeah, so this is that. It's very cozy. I I do have to say, I really, really like the, the fabric, um, especially like with these two yarns held together. It's very like squishy and just, extremely soft and I know I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of this when I do end up finishing it so I think I'll finish it today and then um, weave in the ends and wash it and block it and then I can't wait to have it on my head and um, wear it so yeah this is the first work in progress that I have the second one is part of a project that I've shown before. It's like more of a long-term project for me. And that is the sleeve to my favorite uh, sweater by Kim Hargreaves. Um, so I'm knitting this in Sadnesgarn um, Alpaca. I will put the colorway below because it's just a number and I always forget it. It's like 26 something. Um, but this is what I have so far. So I cast this on last week or so. It does knit up very fast and I don't know why progress on this sweater is so slow for me. And I think I mentioned in my first podcast episode that I had like no real plan when I would finish it. And then I just roughly said like February and I'm not going to finish it in February. Um, I'm not, not going to set any goal for this because it's just something that I pick up every now and then and I do really enjoy knitting on it, but um, it's not something I'm in a rush to finish. So I think like once summer comes around, I'm going to stop working on this anyway and I'm not going to have it done before that. So I'm probably going to pick it up again um, next fall, autumn season. So 
yeah, this is what I have so far. You know, the cables. I accidentally did the cables in the wrong direction, but that's okay. I think technically you're supposed to switch directions, like you're supposed to do three um, in the back and then three in the front. I didn't do that because the front panel of the sweater for me, for my size, had an uneven amount of cables and I just thought like that looked stupid so I just did them all in the same direction. I'm doing that here now as well except I accidentally did them in the wrong direction but that's okay, like no one's gonna notice. So yeah, this is what I have so far. This is the yarn. It's very nice and fluffy and I found out I am gonna have to order more of this because I originally said I might get away with using or to have like enough so basically I have 14 I think skeins and I did some math and and calculated that I would only be able to use two skeins per sleeve and I'm already on the second one and I'm not even halfway done with this sleeve so um, I'm definitely gonna have to order more so I need to like check where I can buy that but yeah, I'm just going to continue knitting on this very slowly, very relaxed, but this is what I have so far for the sleeve. All right, so this is another basic double rib beanie. <laughs> this is another hat for my dad. Um, I wanted to make him like a thicker, like warmer one, but I don't think I'm going to be able to finish this like on time because it's already getting warmer. So yeah, I, there's no rush to finish this now. Um, I'm using Durerum Natura uh, Gilead again uh, in the color, I think, Cinnamon. It's a really nice, like, orangey, like, really warm brown. I think I'm going to have to make myself something in this color as well. I really like it. Um, you'll notice it's in cake form because I originally, <laughs> I had knit a basic single rib be also by Cleomie Smith because I wanted to have a little bit of variety. I didn't always just want to do two by two rib. And so I noticed when I first started um, knitting it, I'm very like picky about ribbing and how it looks, especially one by one rib. A lot of the time, if the yarn isn't right and if your gauge isn't right, if the needle isn't right, it just doesn't look good. And I wasn't really like super happy with how it was turning out. And so I was just like, okay, it's like, stop like being so overdramatic, just keep knitting it. So I did keep knitting it and I was noticing, I think I made the, the second size with the recommended needle and everything. And so the medium size, there's only S, M and L and I made the M and my dad has a really big head. So I already made the medium and I noticed it was turning out way too big. And so I was just, I continued knitting it and I finished it actually and I blocked it and after blocking it, it was just huge. Like it, I knew like if I gave it to my dad and he wore it, he would like start wearing it. Um, after a couple of wears, I think it would just be totally like baggy and worn out. And so I decided to frog it like after having washed it and blocked it already, which was kind of frustrating. But I think it would have been more frustrating for me to um, finish something, gift that thing, and then have it only be worn a couple of times because it's like too like loose after that. So I just cast on a another double rib beanie because I'm just like more happy with how the double rib looks in this yarn as well. So yeah, this is what I have so far. Not a lot, but you know, I pick this up every now and then and just do a couple of rows. Um, and I really like the color. So that's that. You are not going to believe what I'm about to show you. Um, because me and sock knitting have not always gotten along. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I mentioned in my last episode that I started like knitting another sock. I had originally started knitting a sock in like my first episode and I just wasn't like happy with it. It was just like too fiddly and I just didn't enjoy knitting it. And then I put everything sock related in the naughty corner and left it there for a bit. And then I kept like seeing other podcasters knitting socks and I got FOMO. <laughs> so I was like, well, everyone's knitting socks. Like I'm just too stubborn to just let it go. So I cast on a pair of socks 
And the reason why I picked this specific pair of socks is because I originally ordered Richard Zaria Mondim. Um, I don't remember this, the color, but I will link it or name it down below um, for a Sophie scarf. However, this is a bit too, like, I find it a little bit too scratchy for my neck. So I was like, okay, I'll just use it for like socks or something. Um, so yeah, I had this yarn and then I saw that Florence from Handmade by Florence, um, love her podcast, released a sock pattern with like some little faux cables and I love cables. So, and it also had a rolled edge and I am loving rolled edges at the moment. So it uses the same yarn and I, I just cast it on. So this is what I have so far. There's not a lot, but I've only been working on this for a couple of days. So let me just try and show you. It has like some little, you know, some little faux cables on there. Sorry, the lighting is not optimal um, at the moment, but let me just try to, just try to show. Okay, I can't, I can't. You get the idea, right? Um, it's basically like an all over ribbed fabric almost because of the, like you have two stitches. Uh, it's basically almost like two by two ribbing, except one of the, like every other column is like a faux cable. And I really like the look of it and it's turning out super cute. And yeah, so this is, this is something I've been working on just, you know, as a little bit of, um, kind of like a switch up to like what I've, the other stuff I've been working on. Um, because it's nice to have some variety in there to have like a bunch of like different, I like to have like different needle sizes, uh, several projects with different needle sizes so I can just switch back and forth between them. Um, yeah, so this is the, it's also, I'm noticing like, why is everything, why is everything like, first it was green and now it's like rusty orange. Okay, anyway, very excited about this. Um, it's going really well so far. I'm using my Addy uh, Crazy Trio, I believe it's called. Um, one thing I need to mention real quick, this is technically part of my acquisitions, but, I wanted to mention this because it's, you know, it's sock related. I got some, oh, sorry, I picked up the wrong size. These are actually 3.25, but I also have them in 2.25. Some Chowgu, um nine inch, 23 centimeter um, circulars because I heard someone talking about these. Um, I think it was Knee Knits and she mentioned that she wasn't a huge sock knitter and then she got nine inch circulars and after that, like, she just was able to knit socks uh, and enjoy it. And so I was like, well, maybe I need to try that. So I got these um, because I wanted to make some DK socks and, like, some fingering weight socks. And I do have to say the cast-on pr uh, process with these is a lot uh, easier and is a lot funner because you don't have to, like, fuss about with, like, casting on the like half of the stitches on one needle and then half of the stitches on the other needle and so that is a lot better with these but these these I've noticed they just hurt my hands and I tried to get used to them like I did knit almost half of like what I have now on this sock with these small circulars but they just started hurting my hands maybe it's just the way that I knit because I tend to like grip the needles really tightly with my with my right hand and it was really hard for me to get used to because I didn't know like how to hold them in my hand and then I had them like resting on this finger and then I had like almost like a blister here um it was crazy so these are good for like the first couple of rows but then I switched back to like the crazy trio because the needles on there are longer and I've just noticed it's just been a lot more um, relaxed and less painful to knit with those. So we'll see, maybe I'll switch back and try it out again. Um, but that's, that's my sock progress so far. This last project that I'm about to show you, I might've forgotten something because it's been so long since I recorded my last episode, but I'm pretty sure this is the last one. If not, if I forget something, I'll just show you next time. Um, so <laughs> this is a bit of a mess because, um, I am really impatient uh, when it comes to like 
starting projects. So once I receive my yarn, I want to cast on immediately. And the thing is, is that my mom and I, we share a Swift. So we live about 35 minutes apart. Uh, so it, when I need the, the Swift, I can't like get it immediately. Um, I'll have to like wait till I can, you know, till I have time to pick it up or she can bring it over to my place. And so I was too impatient with this because the yarn does come in hank form. And so I've done this previously. I have this like Ikea table with like this serving like plate thing on top of it. And basically it looks a little bit like a Swift and it's pretty much the exact width of a Swift. And <laughs> I've just been like opening the hank and just putting it over this um, table thing. Um, because you can remove like the 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 serving uh i don't know what it's called the serving thing on top of it you can basically take it off and then you just have something that looks like a swift almost i would show you like it's right here next to me but i don't want to cause more damage than i already did because it's like a mess down here right now um anyway i was too impatient to uh wait until i had the swift so i just did what i had done previously and now it's like a huge mess it's just like yeah, it's all over the place, um, but that's okay. And also I was really bad about preparing this whip because I have three more stitches on this needle. I don't know why I just didn't finish the row. I think I need to check the pattern. That's why I didn't finish it, whatever. So I'm sorry about the state of this, but um, yeah, I'm very, very excited about this project because I had been eyeing it on Ravelry for a while and I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was like, I just, I feel like I have this vision in my head, just like with the with the Sophie scarf. I had this vision in my head. I know what I want to wear it with, like in which situations I want to wear it. Like, I feel like I could wear it to so many things that I have in my closet. And I just, I really needed to make it. And um, the pattern is called Ash Fork, Ash Fork Vest. Um, it's a pattern for Brooklyn Tweed. Um, I don't remember the designer's name, but I will definitely put it here somewhere. Um, and it uses Brooklyn Tweed Dapple as a yarn, which is 60% merino, 40% cotton. And I've really wanted to try out like a wool cotton mix before because I haven't used one before. And um, so I picked the exact color that they used in the sample, which is black walnut. This is what it looks like. It's gonna be very hard to show you, but you can see here, the main thing is like the yarn that's like the highlight of it because I just really really love how this looks um you can see like some like cream colored speckles in there and it's just I really love this color because it's like it's almost black but it's not like black it's like a brownish grayish moment I don't know how to describe it but I just know I have a t-shirt in almost this color and it's my favorite t-shirt I would wear it every day if I could so I'm very happy about the color of this and um when I ordered this I actually because there is a lot of variation in like color and tone between like each skein and so I left a little note for the yarn store that said, could you like, please check and make sure that these, the, the, each skein is like not too different from one another because, you know, I want to make like a coherent garment and they did like a really good job and almost every skein that I got, I got seven, um, for my size. They're almost all the same color. Pretty much they are the same color. I didn't, haven't seen any like visible differences. So I'm very, very excited about this. Um, I wish I could show you more. This is just like really stupid on my part to have done this but this is what it looks like usually the pattern has like these faux cables and I just didn't like the look of them they're like not actual cables if they were actual cables I probably would have like left them in but they're not it's just like it looks like a stitch that was like pulled across like two more stitches it, it I didn't really just like the way that it looked so I did do them so I basically it's like um re reverse stockinette and stockinette and you kind of like they're like panels with stockinette and then reverse stockinette I still did that and everything because I like how that looks but I didn't really like the cables so I just didn't do them um 
So I've completed all of the short rows here for the vest. This is the back. It's worked top down. Um, yeah, I'm very excited about this because I'm, I'm just really excited to be able to wear it because it's so cute. Like I, I don't know, I'm just like obsessed with it. I can't wait to finish this. Um, so yeah. And the yarn I am also really liking. It's very soft and I absolutely love the color and the look of it. And so this is something that I think I'm gonna like fly through because I'm just so excited to be able to, to wear it. Um, so yeah, that's that. I'll show you um, the yarn like in Hank form in a second for the acquisitions, but yeah, this is the Ash Fork <laughs> vest kind of. All right, so acquisitions. Um, this is the yarn that I was just talking about. This is Brooklyn Tweed Dapple. Looks like this um, in the color Black Walnut. Um, yeah, I got seven skeins of this. I think I'm making the size five for my vest. Um, it calls for seven skeins, and so that's what I got. Um, this yarn isn't the cheapest, and I did spend some time looking for an alternative, but then I just ended up caving and getting the, like, recommended yarn because I couldn't find anything that looked the same, and I really liked the color and the look of the yarn, so, yeah, I just got it, but this is that. Then I got a sweater's quantity of Derer Natura serrano this is what it looks like this is the color poivre poivre which i believe means pepper correct me if i'm wrong um and this is going to be a i think it's called a winter's sweater winter's pullover by ozetta um which is a quite like chunky oversized sweater um, and I believe her sample is also in the same color and this is going to be the last like really like cozy and warm winter sweater I make for the season um, I think after this is done I'm just gonna make like some more lightweight like spring summer stuff but I saw this and I just needed to make it because if you know the brand Baba believe that's how it's pronounced um I think they're like a Spanish or Portuguese brand I'm not I don't remember but um they have like a lot of like really like chunky statement uh sweaters and I believe they're also like a sustainable brand um and I've been obsessed with their sweaters for a while now for a couple of years now and I've always thought that's definitely something that you could you know knit yourself and I've seen other people like replicating the style of those sweaters and um the problem with that brand is that <laughs> I don't know if this is the case for all of their sweaters but they're just one size so like even if I wanted to buy one of those sweaters, um, like it wouldn't fit the way that I wanted to. So I'm making one myself. Um, the winter's sweater is extremely like oversized, has a lot of positive ease. I think it has calls for like 40 centimeters of positive ease. I'm not going to make one with that much positive ease. Um, I think I'm only going to do like 20 to 30 centimeters of positive ease. So I'm making a smaller size than um, is recommended for my bust circumference, but that's okay. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to cast this on and I think it's gonna be a really enjoyable and fast knit because it's knit on six millimeter needles. So I'm very excited about this. I love this color so much. Like it's like the perfect like heathery brown. I really like it. So. Um, I got, I think seven, no, is it seven? I think seven balls of this um, to make this one. So I'm very excited to cast this on. Um, and this is the last thing I purchased. I still have some other stuff to show you, but this is the last yarn I purchased before deciding I probably need to do a yarn band, but I'll talk about that in a second. Um, yeah, the next thing here is a little bit of an older um, acquisition. I got this when I ordered the Shiny Happy Cotton to make this sweater. And I've been wanting to try this yarn for ages because I'm a huge fan of recycled um, yarns. I just think it's 
like great to have recycled yarn and uh so I got this um wool in the gang what is it called back for good cashmere which is 97% recycled cashmere and 3% recycled wool so I don't what, which color is this what does it say what is it eucalyptus green so it's like this nice like dusty green color. I got only two balls of this because it's expensive. Um, and I got this on sale as well. I don't think I would buy it full price. Um, but I really wanted to make like a hat out of this because it's like really soft and, um, I haven't cast on anything with this. So this might have to wait until like next fall, but I really like it. it's very, very soft. Um, the next yarn is one I've used before that I really like, um, and that is Knitting for All of Heavy Merino. Um, this, I had a very specific project in mind for this. I got seven skeins of this. They come in 50 gram balls. And I wanted to make like a neck warmer slash vest type of thing. Um, I got some inspiration from someone I saw on Instagram, and I really wanted to replicate it. Um, but... I mean, the original thing that I saw wasn't hand knit, it was machine knit, but I, it looked like I knew exactly how to like replicate the structure of it. And then I cast on and it just wasn't turning out the way that I wanted to. Um, I think I've never really worked with yarns this light before. I mean, this hat back here uses, is like held double, so it's not, doesn't have... Uh, it's more opaque, I guess that's what I'm trying to say, than if you knit this, like, held single. And I've noticed that since I don't work with, like, light-colored yarn a lot, that when you knit light-colored yarn single-stranded, it tends to, like, you can see, if you're wearing, like, a dark-colored shirt underneath, you can see through it. Like, the stitches just look like there's more space in between because it's, like, light-colored, and you can see pretty much every single color, um... That you're wearing underneath except if it's like light colored or white so that wasn't like that didn't turn out the way that i wanted it to and i tried a couple of different approaches to it i think like three or four different approaches it took up a lot of my time um <laughs> and i eventually just frogged it because i was like no this is not like the vision this is not the vision I had in my head this is not turning out the way that I want it to and I just didn't wasn't motivated to continue um so I unraveled it and now I have seven balls of this yarn <laughs> lying around but that's completely fine I forgot to mention the color the color is elderflower um which is a it's like a very it's almost the same as this the, the this color uh it's a very like yellowy cream color which I really like and uh so this is just in my stash now and I am like don't worry I am going to use it um I'm probably going to use it for like a striped sweater but that's like something that I'm going to do like next fall so I don't have any like concrete plans for this um but I am going to use it because I really love this yarn so the next acquisition is actually not yarn um it's a knitting journal uh this is a knitting journal from lina publishing um see it on the back here uh it just says my knitting notes on the front and i think i love this color and i was to be honest i was influenced into buying this um by maya from feeling froggy knits you should subscribe to her her videos are amazing um but yeah i saw this and i was like i i need it <laughs> so i got it um basically the inside looks like this you have like a project page and you can add like the date it was started and finished and the yarn the quantity and the project and the designer and all that kind of stuff and then you have just like a page with like where you can add your notes and then you have like a blank page between each project page and I don't know exactly the purpose of it I guess if you are someone who likes to print out pictures and add them to your knitting journal um this could be good for you but I don't do that and so I think it's basically just like a waste of paper because I've been filling in my things and I'm already like almost halfway 
into the knitting journal and I've only added like, I don't know, like maybe 10 or so projects. So I think once this is full, I'm just going to get a regular um, notebook and make that my knitting journal, but this is really cute. So if you're someone who like can make good use out of that extra blank page then this is probably going to be perfect for you but for me I mean it's it's really nice and it it looks really nice it looks really cute and it's fun to write in but yeah it, it's not that like not super practical for me personally that's it for acquisitions I did buy like some smaller things here and there but it's just not like worth showing you right now um like those uh nine inch circulars in 2.25 millimeters um I don't know where they are they're somewhere in my apartment but I talked about them earlier so that's fine anyway so I wanted to talk about some abandoned whips real quick um just to hold myself accountable so I talked about the RO sweater I think in my last episode and I had cast that on and I was working on the yoke and I got to a point where I wasn't feeling it anymore. Like I just didn't like the construction, which is weird because the whole reason why I wanted to make this sweater is because of the construction, like the saddle shoulder and everything. But I just didn't like it. Like I don't want to give away too much about the pattern, but there's a point where you have to increase every single round. And I hate doing that. I hate increasing every single round because I feel like it puts so much tension on like one stitch that's in the middle or like on like the the strands connecting the stitches do you know what I mean I just don't like it it just makes me anxious because I'm like that is like the first point that's gonna rip if it ever comes to that so I, I wasn't feeling it so I decided to put it aside for a second mull it over think about it and eventually I was just like okay no I'm going to do something different with it so originally I had a couple of other sweaters in mind I actually purchased like a contrast color because I thought I wanted to do some color work then I decided I didn't want to do color work <laughs> actually you know thinking about it now I think I might actually go back to my original idea of the color work honestly I don't know um right now it's just sitting in my stash waiting to become something else right now like the idea in my head that I have right now is a is an October sweater I have the pattern I've had it for a while um and I think it could be really nice to have some stripes and then like a like the accent color like on the top of the collar as well and like on the bottom I have like a little nice little split hem basically I really like the fact that it has two by two ribbing and so that's what's drawing me to it but um yeah we'll see I want to make like a pretty cropped version of that yeah I don't know yet but um it's definitely going to become some kind of sweater I don't know when and I don't know exactly what yet, but um, yeah, so that's no longer in existence, but that's, uh, that's fine. Um, other than that, the yarn ban. So with my last yarn purchase, which was the Serrano um, by Durham Natura, I was kind of like, okay, let's draw the line here because it was just getting out of hand. Um, I haven't actually purchased that much. It, I just feel like the sweater quantities that I have purchased have been expensive. And so I do still have yarn in my sash. I just mentioned like a project that I wasn't going to continue where I still have the yarn. Um, so I have a lot of yarn still that needs to be used. I have one specific yarn that's like a spring summer yarn that I have attempted like six or seven different projects with. I really like the yarn, but I just haven't found the perfect project for it yet. And I want to use it so bad. So I think I need to like draw the line here and work with what I have first until it gets to like, you know, summer almost. Um, and I want to start knitting like some summer related stuff um, and some tops and whatever. So 
yeah i'm i'm not going to i'm not going to buy any yarn over the next month two months at least and I'm saying this now to hold myself accountable because I really just want to, you know, use what I have and not over purchase. It's just like, you know, you have those phases where you just find yourself needing to purchase things, needing that like instant gratification, that that hit of dopamine, dopamine to feel good. It, it gets out of hand pretty easily. So I have phases where I, I, I have that and I'm in one of those phases now until it eventually gets out of hand and then I'm just like, okay, I need to stop cold turkey right now. And then I stop and then it goes well for like a month or two and then I'm like, oh, I haven't treated myself in a while and then that kick starts it again. So it's a very dangerous cycle and I need to stop it right now. Um, so hopefully no new acquisitions in the next video unless it's I don't know maybe like a knitting magazine or something like that I mean that's fine just no new yarn um and hopefully some nice finished objects so I think that's all I have for you today um it's been a long video um I'm looking at my camera right now it says one hour and ten minutes so let's see how far I can cut this down so it's not too long um, thank you for joining me today. Um, if you've made it this far, thanks for sticking around. Um, thank you all for watching and commenting and I really enjoy talking to you all in the comments. So if you have anything to say, uh, let me know. Um, I will check back in with you in three to four weeks, hopefully. Um, if not, you can always find me on Instagram and whatever. I'll be posting on there and adding to my stories and stuff. So um, yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you when I see you. Bye.